Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quartic equation. We have x to the fourth equals 5x plus 6, and we're going to find the solutions to this equation. Which solutions? All solutions. Real and complex. Well, all solutions are complex, but we prefer to call some of them real because they are real. So to be able to solve this equation, I'm going to use a very interesting method that I learned from Nadia Fan. Thank you very much for your contributions to this channel. It means a lot. So we have this equation. What are we going to do? First of all, notice that this is a really like overly simplified equation. I mean, we don't have x cubed. We don't have x squared. We're missing a lot of terms, which makes it somewhat easier to solve, right? There's obviously a certain technique to solve these kinds of equations because this is very special, but I'm gonna show you the general method because not every equation is special, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We have the x to the fourth isolated, and if we didn't, then we would isolate it pretty much. You can have some other terms, but it's better to keep it isolated like this. And then I'm gonna add something to both sides so that I can make the left-hand side a perfect square. And that can be achieved because this is fourth power. I can add 2kx squared plus k squared. And you know why this is significant? First of all, we have x to the fourth, so we're going to need x squared in the middle. Remember the 2ab, whenever you write a plus b or a minus b quantity squared, you have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So that number is part of my 2ab x squared and then i would need b squared in this case b happens to be k so then b squared would be k squared makes sense so the left hand side is a perfect square and it's actually x squared plus k quantity squared nice what about the right hand side well i gotta add that first let's go ahead and add the same thing to both sides which is 2k x squared plus k squared now k is a number i need to determine so that the left-hand side and right-hand side are both perfect squares. Because if one of them is a perfect square, the other one also has to be, right? Now, right-hand side is a quadratic, which is nice. So we can write it as 2kx squared plus 5x plus 6 plus k squared. Awesome. Now, how do we make sure that the right-hand side is a perfect square? Well, it's quadratic in order for this to be, since this is a perfect square, in order for the right-hand side to be a perfect square, the discriminant needs to be zero. Remember the quadratic equation whose graph is a parabola? If the parabola is tangent to the x-axis, that means there's only one solution, or there's double solution, or it means the discriminant is zero. Or you get a perfect square, like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the delta or the discriminant of this quadratic. What is delta? Formula is b squared minus 4ac. Don't forget that. b is 5, so it's going to be 25 minus 4 times a, which is 2k, times b, which is 6 plus k squared. Be careful, because k is considered a constant, so 6 plus k squared is our constant in this case. Make sense? Great. Now, we want this to be 0, because that's the only way it can be a perfect square. And I'm going to put these on the right-hand side instead of just distributing with the minus sign. I don't like that. So I'm going to multiply these two first, which gives me 8k, and then distribute that over. So I'm going to get from here 48k plus 8k cubed equals 25, because 25 is going to be left alone here, right? Awesome. Now, this equation might look dif difficult to you solve, so, right? I mean, we started off with a quartic, and now we have a cubic. That's what happens with polynomial equations when you apply certain methods, you know, factoring or Descartes or Cardano, whatever you want to call that, right? Whoever came up with a certain method, you come up with a reduced power, a reduced degree. But unfortunately, that does not happen with quintic equations or hexic or septic or octic, any degree five or higher. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. It's really sad that we don't have a quintic formula, even though some people claim that quintics can be solved with certain radicals. That doesn't count. In my opinion, again, that's personal. You know, if you don't like that, that's perfectly fine, and I understand. But there's no formula for that. But this one, we have a formula. Should we use the cubic formula? No. Because you're going to see in a little bit 
why this equation is so easy to solve. Ready? Okay, let me show you. So we have 8K cubed plus 48K, and I'm gonna leave the 25 on the right hand side. You don't have to, but I wanna show you something real cool. That's why it's better if you leave it on the right hand side. Okay, now notice that 8K cubed is a perfect square. What if it wasn't? If it was like 4K cubed, we could still multiply it by two to make it a perfect cube, make sense? But in this case, we don't need to, we already have it, it's good. Now we can go ahead and do this then. Write this as 2K to the third power. That's to emphasize that it's a perfect cube. And I'm gonna follow up by the same thing. I want 2K here, of course, put that in parentheses, but to adjust, I need to get 48K. So what am I supposed to multiply by? A lot of times I will ask this question to my students like, I'll pose it like two times what equals 48. And they're like, what? Okay, it's 24. You just have to divide by two, right? And then it's equal to 25. Now, why is this significant? Because we're gonna use hocus pocus mathematic or abracadabra. I mean, we're gonna use substitution, keep it simple. So we're gonna place 2K with something. How about Y? Y cubed plus 24Y is equal to 25. Awesome. Now, oh, come on. Y is equal to one. Why? Because it's easy. Look, one plus 24 equals 25. Remember what I've been telling you. If the sum of the coefficients in a polynomial is zero, or if Y equals one works, it is a solution, obvious, right? And it's so obvious that one plus 24 is 25, isn't it? So Y equals one is a solution, but wait a minute, where does Y come from? From 2K. Okay, so Y is equal to 2K and Y is equal to one. What does that mean? It means K is equal to one half, beautiful. We were looking for K and we found it, awesome. Now let's go back to our original problem. Let's rewrite it. X squared plus K quantity squared equals, and now what do I have? I have the 2k x squared, as far as I remember, plus 5x plus 6 plus k squared. Now, since k is 1 half, it kind of makes sense. You could also go off of this, but k could also be 2 because 4x squared is also perfect squared. But anyways, in this case, this is 1, and this is 1 half, which is 1 fourth. So you get the following, x squared plus 1 half, because k is 1 half, equals x squared plus 5x plus 6 plus 1 fourth, which is 25 fourths. And guess what? That is a perfect square. Of course, it has to be, right? Otherwise, this method is not going to work. And now we can write this as x plus half of 5 squared. Beautiful. Now, this is the whole purpose. Now, we have a squared equals b squared. Square root both sides. You get the absolute value, so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. And you get two equations. One of them is x squared plus 1 half is x plus 5 halves. The other one is x squared plus 1 half is the opposite of x plus 5 halves, which is this. And now let's go ahead and solve each equation. Bring these over. And you can multiply everything by 2, by the way, first, if you want. I think that's a good idea. Uh, it's going to make it a little easier so you don't have to deal with fractions, so on and so forth. Uh-oh. I end up dividing by 2. Anyways, it was going to simplify. And now this equation is factorable into x minus 2 and x plus 1 equals 0, which means x equals 2 or x equals negative 1 is a solution. Awesome. We got two real solutions, and let's proceed with the other one. Let's see what it's going to give us. Again, you can divide, uh, multiply by 2, but it'll probably simplify at the end. 2x squared plus 2x plus 6 equals 0. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. We don't get real solution. But that's okay. We can still solve it. Now with the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. It's going to be 1 minus 12. That's a negative 11. I mean, square root of 11 multiplied by i, which is the complex imaginary unit, divided by 2. Unfortunately, maybe fortunately, that's a complex solution. So we have four solutions, two of them are real. What is that supposed to mean? Let's take a look. Ta -da -da -da. The graph by Wolfram Alpha, good job, shows us that there are two intersection points, which means there are two real solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus B I. And bye-bye.